Now it's time to optimize the operation point. So operation point, we already got it. Let's say we got this system right here, and we choose our pump. We are delivering a head that we need and a volumetric flow rate that we need. So what we want to do is to optimize it, increase efficiency, decrease power, better flow rate, and optimize it by changing the head of the system if possible. And I say if possible because it's kind of hard to do it. So for example, exercise number one, they tell you optimize efficiency at all costs. Well, then it's very easy. You have efficiency of 72. The only thing to do is increase it to 73 and work in this area. So you move. And one thing here, guys, you're going to decrease the volumetric flow rate. But because that was priority to optimize efficiency, it's okay. In real life, probably you're not going to have this. No one wants to decrease their volumetric flow rate, especially they are producing and selling everything as it goes out. So, you need to consider that. Now, they tell you this exercise number two, operation or optimizing the point of operation. Decrease power requirements, maintaining the flow rate. So, that's an interesting one. We have the flow rate, which is, well, we need to know, yeah. We need to know what diameter or where are we? And we are right here. We're using a seven and a half inch diameter impeller. So this is the operation point. You can see from this line, it's almost 30 horsepower that I'm using. And I want to decrease that. So let's see how can we do it. The most obvious one since power goes to this. And if we want to maintain the magic flow rate, I need to find something in between. So uh, if I lower this, I will decrease the flow rate. Uh, sorry, the I will maintain the flow rate and I will decrease the pump requirements. And well, how can I lower the system curve? So this is my system curve. And if I wanted to lower it, I will need to do one of the next, or at least one of the next three. Open all valves to that percentage in order to get the system curve right here. You will need to clean pipes in order to uh, decrease the roughness of pipe and maybe with that you decrease the the energy loss due to friction and if you decrease the energy loss due to friction you will decrease the head of the system or change the pipe diameters if you decrease the velocities due to the change of diameters you're going to have less uh, energy loss due to friction and you're going to lower the head of the system so supposing it is possible do that you will be operating at a something around here and actually you need to also lower the diameter guys it's very important you need to change the impeller size let me show you let me see but not that's exercise three actually I didn't show you but we also need to decrease the size of the impeller so it will be something around six and a half inches and if I use this, I will have the same volumetric flow rate and I will operate less, which makes sense because I already clean up and I reduce all the friction. And now let's do exercise number three. An engineer proposes the next change. So I have this all designed, I have this system curve, and we're using six diameter inch, and we are using 330 gallons per minute. So this guy wants to literally just increase from 6 to 8.5 inches and force the system to work here. So we will need to, of course, increase efficiency, uh, sorry, friction loss, which means change valves or close valves. And we need to change the pumps uh, impeller in order to maintain the same voltage flow rate. Okay. And we will have this operation point. Actually, it's awesome because we are increasing the where, where are we? We're increasing the efficiency from 63 to 71. That's cool. Well, the thing here, guys, is that this increase is due to the increase in friction. So it doesn't make that much sense to do that because you're going to increase friction. Yes, maybe you are having more efficiency. But you increase the head and the power right now. Let me see. No, I didn't include the power. But if we do an analysis on power, right now we are using about 30. 
H powers and before we were using uh, almost 15 so you are using twice as power or horsepower before and you just increase in 15 percent the efficiency so you might think uh, another time maybe you don't want to do this because you increase the friction loss we needed to close valves in order to force the system to do this so you need to think again and say is it worth it or not worth it how much cost my impeller change because we're also changing the impeller from six to eight and a half how much cost the operation of this right here low efficiency and low power versus high efficiency and high power and after doing an exercise of is it worth it not worth it you should choose the final decision and maybe this engineer is wrong and you must go back and tell him no because we are increasing the pump power and we need to install a new impeller which probably if you have it fine if you don't have it you will need to expand so I will tell you that I don't recommend this for our process right now this was a free preview you want to get full access go to my incompressible flow course the link is in the description of the video you will get all access not only that you get a very straightforward uh, user-friendly interface so for instance you were analyzing or studying pumps you have it here the pump block and then you have the sections if you're for example studying the types of pumps you can go here and you have all the classes right here not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these so for instance if you were studying positive displacement pumps the video is right here you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here centrifugal pumps which is a very important topic in this course you have it right here